Good evening. Today is the 12th day of January 2017. And we continue with our series, Explorations in Savagery, with our brother Alok. We are, we are in book two, the book of the Traveler of the Worlds, Canto six, Kingdoms and Godheads of the Greater Life. And we are now towards the bottom of page 188. So as we can see that Sri is taking us through a whole exploration of different worlds of which one of the most uh, fascinatingly complex world is the White Hill. Uh, mystics have been familiar with this world. Some, you know, uh, mystics, uh, at least uh, Kabir and Guru Nanak, they mention about mm. these worlds in the passing. And they say that there are many, many beautiful, splendorous uh, gardens and palaces uh, in the uh, boundless kingdom of the Lord. I think something like that, uh, Christ also says when he says, there are many mansions in the house of my Lord. Mm. So uh, these worlds have been known, but they have not been described in detail because traditional mystic experience has been to escape from all confines of form and the manifested creation into the unmanifest and the formless. So the method they adopt is, regardless of anything, don't focus on all these experiences as you go through these visions and voices and many, many kinds of experiences that naturally arise. And there is no doubt that a sadhak can never be enough on caution against the onslaught of this world or the experiences of this world which come not only as visions and voices but as suggestions. As I said, suggestions that one is a yogi, suggestions that one is an instrument, suggestions of all kinds. And very often these suggestions also carry a kernel of truth in it. So that makes it <laughs> even more complex. So, uh, the, see, Buddha was well aware of these things. So his method was um, just dis disregard them all as illusions. So right from the physical world, right up to the higher mental worlds, they were all illusions. Till you eventually got out of this entire gamut of creation into the permanent. But because Buddha had gone through these experiences, it's very interesting that post-Buddhism, in fact, even while Buddha was still there in the physical body, Mother says that a religion had begun to form around him, which divided itself into two sects. So one was the Hinayana Buddhism, which follows this line that, you know, Hin you know, the little vehicle where you, you don't uh, talk about all the entire complexity and richness of creation and the variety of experiences and focus only on nothingness. Whereas there was another Buddhism, which is Mahayana Buddhism. If you read Mahayana Buddhism, it sounds like Hinduism with so many gods, goddesses and, you know, titans and all kinds of energies and, uh, you know, Tibetan Buddhism uh, Tibetan derives Buddhism. a lot from that yes. and a lot of occultism because yeah. they... Focus on the many-sidedness of the uh, creative spirit. So depending on uh, which way one looks at it. But in Sri Yoga, because the goal is world transformation, you cannot escape at least a working knowledge of world forces. And um, not only working knowledge, uh, to some extent even an occult understanding, if not... Uh, we, we are not practitioners of occultism, unless to some people it comes naturally. But still we must understand the occult design behind this world. Not only so that we are not lost, but also we can understand the play. Yes. But only Sri Aurobindo could describe it in, in detail. detail. So now we see uh, in the next uh, maybe one and a half or two pages, oh. or maybe three pages, Sri Aurobindo gives us as if in a summary this whole world with this many, many facets. And the beauty is that as you go through these passages, which I always feel that, you know, Shurbindo actually brings the picture alive. Yes. It looks like plenty of things are happening here. And they are taking plenty of forms. 
and that's what we will see page 188 as one who spells illumined illumined characters as one who spells illumined characters the key book of a crabbed magician text he scanned her subtle tangled weird designs and the screen difficult theorem of her clues and that's very interesting <laughs> because we're going to see a lot of words in this yeah. Yeah. this coming passage which which actually relate if you look at it closely to magic yes so and, and crabbed you yeah. see crabbed is shaky almost illegible unreadable cramped style it oh. also gives an impression of you know as if these words have been deliberately or the letters have been deliberately blended into each other you see when you see many of these occult diagrams so you will see in these occult diagrams of uh, ancient times you will see that there are certain geometric designs and in each design there would be a letter now you know now what is not mentioned is how you are supposed to read them in what order and what they really mean that is hidden from the uh, non initiate and only those who are initiate they are given this you know these diagrams and the deeper understanding um, you know uh, when satprem was practicing occultism with uh, pandit nilkant yes. shastri yes once he was told that you make this particular diagram and you have to do this particular mantra uh, uh, to so invoke mahalakshmi so many times so many times yes, yes so many times and uh, it was a whole diagram and mother asked him to uh, tell in details so you know he says in details and he says you know these are all nonsensical words you know they don't make any sense to me and i have to recite them so many times you know some of these mantras of this um, which invoke these deities are they make no sense uh, om him clean bring you know you they don't make any sense uh, shubhendra has even made a little humorous uh, aside to it when he tells nirod baran when he had a boil he says you know you have to tell a particular mantra om tat tat tat, tat. so nirodha did it very seriously and he says by the way i am trying your mantra but it is having no effect so he says no 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 you you can't do it just like this there is a process to do it and the process is you have to say it so many times in the presence of four brahmins who don't have a pot belly and are free of all sex thoughts so you know <laughs> <laughs> you know the lord's ways of at in one stroke yeah. showing many things <laughs> so yeah. so you know it's so interesting these occult patterns yeah. they are practiced you know you have sri chakra and many of these and they actually try to invoke and capture the the deities in these patterns but what they succeed is not in the real thing because you cannot capture the real truth but in some reflection of that like there are many kalis on the vital plane and you can capture some of these and you know uh, make them do your wish but not the real mahakali because he escapes all pattern and design so here you know this crabbed magician text traced in the monstrous sands of desert time the thread beginnings of a titan works watched her sharad of action for some hint so you know this this the whole procession and you have to understand what it really means and many of the dreams in the vital world are like this and you have to see them and decipher you have to look for some clue sometimes the clue is in some person and that person is not important but the name is at least i have seen in my dreams and many other persons i i have noticed that the clue lies you know in the name of the person so the name of the person stands for something and the vital world use that part and throw up a whole image now you have a clue but if you take it it's that person then you are grossly misled these are very different dreams from the higher mental worlds where you know the symbol is far more clear so <laughs> these yeah. are red the no gestures of her silhouettes and strove to capture in their burden drift the dance fantasia of her sequence escaping into rhythmic mystery a glimmer of fugitive feet 
on fleeing soil. Now these no gestures. Yes. This Sri Aurobindo uses these words to to convey something to us. Uh, the no gesture is no is a classical Japanese drama uh, performed on a bare stage with uh, beautiful costumes, and these are certain gestures that are made. Yes. It's so interesting. No gestures of her silhouettes. Yes. You have to decipher from that yeah. the real sense which is behind. And it plays. And they come and vanish. Yeah. All kinds of things. And beautiful lines. Escaping the dance fantasia of her sequences. Escaping into rhythmic mystery. A glimmer of fugitive feet on fleeing soil. So the whole stage itself is ever changing. As if there is a massive light and sound show yes. and the color changes, the yes. stage changes, everything changes. It's yes. And forms change, their draperies change. So this is how the vital world yes. is. In the labyrinth pattern of her thoughts and hopes and the byways of her intimate desires, in the complex corners crowded with her dreams and rounds crossed by an intrigue of irrelevant rounds. Mm. You know, doodling. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds you of doodling. Rounds with rounds and, yeah, yeah. you know, meaningless rounds. Irrelevant rounds. A wanderer straying amid fugitive scenes. He lost its signs and chased each failing guess. So there is something and he wants to catch it and then he loses it. It's like, you know, uh, you're trying to pick up one end of the thread and reach the other. And you're getting lost in the way. Like those mazes, you know, which, yes. you know, you're saying, very, very complex mazes. So you try and you suddenly reach a block. You come back, you take up another trail. So that is how this world is. Ever he met keywords, ignorant of their key. You have the classical computer, <laughs> ignorant of the key. A sun that dazzled its own eye of sight. It, the suns of the vital world are very dazzling. Their splendors are very bright. Uh, it's not soothing. It can even hurt or it will try to impress itself. Unlike the that sun, which is so full of sweetness, so full of beauty. A luminous enigma's brilliant hood lit the dense purple barrier of thought sky. Now, all these are, of course, what should be the scene. Skies of the vital world, exactly. sands of the vital world, ground of the vital world, the ambience of the vital world, everything is being described. A dim large trance showed to the night her stars, as if sitting near an open window's gap, he read by lightning flash on crowding flash, chapters of her metaphysical romance of the soul's search for lost reality, and her fictions drawn from spirit's authentic fact. Her caprice and conceits and meanings locked. Her rash, unseizable freaks and mystery turns. Classic description yeah. of the light and sound shows, if anybody has seen. Lightnings, flash after flash. Yeah. There is an authentic fact from which it derives. And it tries to recreate a scene which is based partly on facts as they have been received which are already distorted and partly on images thrown up by the mind and imaginations and our own conceptions of the whole thing. And we think, ah, it's magnificent. Yeah. And these caprices, which are sudden, unexpected yeah, changes. Yeah. Changes, that's right. And conceits yes. that twist in the mind. Yes. So, you know, this is the uh, original light and sound shows. <laughs> so. The magnificent wrappings of her secrecy, 
that fold her desirable body out of sight. It's like um, a gift packed in such wonderful wraps that you don't feel like opening it. And it's hidden. And you open one wrapper and another comes up. Equally tantalizing. And so it keeps the truth out of sight. And the wrappings are all around. The strange, significant forms woven on her robe, her meaningful outlines of the souls of things he saw, her false transparencies of thought you, her rich brocades with imaged fancy sewn and mutable masks and broiders of disguise. So, Truth is wrapped in magnificent colors and richness and brocades and embroidery and paintings. Yes. So ultimately you end up seeing that and not the truth. The disguise. <laughs> yeah, the disguise. <laughs> because it's so fascinating. A thousand baffling faces of the truth. Looked at him from her forms with unknown eyes. And wordless mouths unrecognizable spoke from the figures of her masquerade or peered from the recondite magnificence and subtle splendor of her draperies. You see, this is a typical, um, you know, we have these two kinds of temples. One is which are bare, absolutely bare. Like, you know, the famous Shiva temple in Kedarnath or Amarnath. Uh, there is nothing, no richness. You just go, it's a journey and at the end you are face to face with the deity. This is one approach to truth. Another is you see some of these South Indian temples. Even before you enter, you will see so many forms all around. And there will always be some demon with two, you know, horns keeping watch. So it's it's because everything is included there. It's not that it's a, you know, that's how these temples were created. You'll see some gods, some goddesses outside. And when you go inside, you will see all kinds of paintings and all kinds of images. It is said that even the uh, uh, sexual acts yes, are displayed yes, in yes, the front. Yes. Because man has to be over them to enter. Uh, or that's, at least be that's, purified. Yeah, that's, of that's one enter. explanation. There is another that in that vision of truth. Truth is a totality, like in uh, Konark, the sun temple of Konark, where the beauty is that at the end, you see the sunlight illumining the deity, is the sun god. But otherwise, it's rich with all kinds of images and symbols, as if in that light, everything exists simultaneously. And you can stop at any of these images and not go beyond. And not go beyond, yes. yes. So it's, 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 it's so rich and fantastic. Sometimes, you know, people see all these designs and do not see the real deity. <laughs> the deity is also draped in all kinds of, you know. The story uh, temple tower. Yes, 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 yes. And ultimately the deity is hardly visible or very, you know, some small and you're looking for it and gone. So in sudden... In sudden scintillations, scintillations of the unknown, in sudden scintillations of the unknown, inexpressive sounds became veridical. Ideas that seemed unmeaning flashed out truth. So we were talking about these sounds, yeah. particularly in these yeah. worlds. You have all these mantras, which are nothing but sound symbols. And each of these sounds... Uh, expresses a deity or a force or a power. And became veridical. Veridical. Became true. That's true. So that's how this whole world operates. And see how Sri Aurobindo uses scintillations, hmm. flashes, sparks. Yes. And then he uses the word flashed. Yes. Flashed out. Voices that came from unseen waiting worlds uttered the syllables of the unmanifest to clothe the body of the mystic word and wizard diagrams of the occult law. You know, all these uh, 
in tantra they are used a lot all these um, various forms geometric figures and patterns jung emphasized a lot on these and he called them mandalas yes, yes. so you know many of these are basically uh, as i said any of these experiences in the vital world can create a sect <laughs> it has a power so you see one side the geometric patterns and you can create a sect where you have a, a sacred uh, letter or a sacred mantra and a sacred design given only to the initiate you know you can have plenty of sects purely connected to the vital and wizard diagrams of the occult law seal some precise unreadable harmony or used you and figure to reconstitute the herald blazon of time secret things shobindra has revealed a lot about magic here thankfully not the details <laughs> so look at this combination you and figure so it's not just yeah. the figure it's a certain combination of shades and light and shadows and it suddenly comes alive yeah so that's how also it operates you know there was a movie i am forgetting where you know they had to they had a certain pattern and there were five elements and Uh, yeah. there was a sixth element to be found i think the movie's name was sixth element maybe i am mistaken <laughs> i have forgotten but it was an interesting and fascinating movie about these kind of worlds where people have to stand on different um, corners of a certain pattern and it's not that anybody could stand on any any corner each person represented something and that's how it had to be and and mother we know so she was a master in all these things also and so she would use sometimes these subtle truths so when satprem told her about all this now you know we connect oh, to this yes yes <laughs> so she she said uh, he said you know it's so difficult to read all this and you know do this mechanically so many time so mother said you know actually it's not necessary <laughs> she said he believes it is it to be like this therefore it is important for him he said he cannot imagine or cannot conceive that truth can be so simple yes. mother spoke about it that it's not necessary to do it in this way in so many ways but this is how the tradition has worked and when she meditated with him yes of you course. remember that she said he went very high but then stopped stop there was something which he could not uh, the barrier he could not cross yes Yes. and he used to always feel that people here they are not doing yoga because you know his idea of yoga was to you know wear a certain dress do a chandan do puja spend a mm. lot of time in meditation etc etc so he couldn't understand that what is this yoga going on though he of course could sense that the divine mother is divine yeah, that much yeah. good sense he had <laughs> yes. but he couldn't understand the working going on and when he mentioned this to the mother mother simply laughed and then she said he cannot understand because yeah. he is yeah. moving in that world the herald blazon mm. coat of arms yes of time secret things yes wow inner green wildernesses and lurking depths how what a lovely oh. suggestion lurking depths you know you almost it brings yeah. to the yeah. eye you know something which is you you get a sense it's there and when you go you suddenly see yes It's almost Yeah. <laughs> lurking depths in a thickets of joy where danger clasp delight so he glimpsed the hidden wings of her songster hopes a glimmer of blue and gold and scarlet fire so you see a play of colors even colors which one can mistake for the supramental blue and gold and scarlet i remember uh, you know in delhi some of us used to study near one of shri bindo's uh, relics which were in the open and they used to have a lot of pranic healing stuff going at on at the ashram not the ashram no. the society center ah okay and the pranic healing uh, stuff were in their own world where you know they were uh, some very great people who could 
do magic and cure and heal now that whole movement has collapsed about that time it was a very big thing and we we were in our own world saying look at it you know in such a wonderful place what is all this nonsense going on and one day we overheard a very interesting conversation uh, some new entrant had come so there was a new course going on you had to pay 2000 rupees and get enrolled in two days pranic healing course then another was you pay some more money and there was a 10 day course like that so this was a two day course where after the course you know they had tea and all and um, so one of the new entrants actually we were sitting there and we couldn't help but over here the conversation because the teacher and this new student were standing in close uh, you know hearing distance so he says you know when i uh, sat uh, i was doing this pranic i saw the golden light he says yes yes you have already arrived at the super mind and you know we <laughs> we you know, we couldn't help but burst out laughing so <laughs> so they quietly moved away but this is true that you know uh, he didn't use the word golden i'm afraid i'm sorry orange light so but he could have well seen golden i mean it's all, all the same shobind say now the true because we we have not seen the original so it's the same thing you know people can dupe you with that this is the original diamond this is the you know original sapphire because unless one has seen the original uh, they are perfect in copying it so so um, all kinds of colors in her covert lanes bordering her chance field paths and by her singing rivulets and calm lakes everything can be mimicked in the vital including the calm including the peace of the sachidanand shurbindo was asked this he said everything that you find in the divine including the peace of nirvana can be mimicked by the vital world and here you find it's almost like earth yeah yeah i mean you have yes of course lanes and fields many of these because rivulets. rather what we see on earth is a pattern drawn from there that's why shobindo exactly. says earth's greatest art is heaven's copy yeah so everything that you find on earth is found in a much more beautiful way uh, in the vital and the subtle physical world yes. there you see the original actually generally you see distortion here except once in a while as you know today um, you were pointing out about mother mentioning the uh, rose and she said it's a fiery rose and then she said you know you don't find such a beautiful uh, thing even in the higher highest worlds so there are few things here which you don't find even in the higher worlds and it's an amazing of course there are things which are here which you don't find for instance the soul <laughs> Uh, so there are uh, and i think suppose because of that because uh, shobind has used the word rose as love for the divine or surrender which are powers and qualities of the soul so it's quite understandable that one may not find it in the higher worlds that intensity he found the glow of her golden fruits of bliss and the beauty of her flowers of dream and muse as if a miracle of hearts changed by joy he washed in the alchemist radiance of her sons the crimson outburst of one secular flower on the tree of sacrifice of spiritual love what how a wonderful beautiful. line how beautiful tree of sacrifice of yeah. spiritual love so what is secular <laughs> it is spirituality sacrificing itself to clothe itself in terms which are more human more understandable to our mind it has sacrificed itself tree of sacrifice of spiritual love it has annulled itself hidden itself and it has taken a you and a form yeah. and an idea which is more comfortable for us so ultimately in the higher truth they all meet together so that also we find there in the vital world in the sleepy splendor of a noons he saw a perpetual repetition through the hours thoughts dance of dragon flies on mystery stream that skim but never test its murmurs race so you know these dragon flies in the night and you know along a rivulet or a stream they come and go they come and go and as if you know they are dancing over the stream yeah, yeah. but they never really touch it or flow with it or go deep into it though it appears 
from one end to the other. But that's the image that Shurabindo brings. And that's why some of these images, you see, that is the other part of it. Some of these images do nourish and nurture the life energy in us. And it's because they are projections of the vital world, sometimes of the higher vital worlds. So you sit near a rivulet and hear its sound, it nurtures you. Or you watch this play of dragonflies or you know you just look at this a garden with flowers and trees and it nurtures you. And mother says sit neck against the big tree. Yeah, a big tree and it oh. can nurture you. So uh, that's because basically they are they contain in their origin they are creations where the vital has gone very richly into it. Of course they draw their ultimate breath and creative joy from the spirit but the forms are typically vital. And so we can actually, when these forms are projected on earth, we can actually enter into something of the vital joy and the vital energy through these. So the age-old remedy to, you know, treat all kinds of maladies from tuberculosis to depression by a change of place may well be true. Though nowadays man has gone everywhere and all places are polluted because of man's presence. But I do believe that if one withdraws into seclusion for a while into such places, one comes back rejuvenated because, you know, they embody. Yes. In nature, you go and you feel a kind of a joy because it contains that joy. I love this line in the sleepy splendor of a noons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sleepy splendor of the noon, yeah. you know. <clears throat> and heard the laughter of her rose desires. Running as if to escape from longed for hands. Running as if to escape from longed for hands. Jingling sweet anklet bells of fantasy. So look at roses swing yeah. gently. Yeah. So you, as if you want to catch them and they just go away. Thereby testing and teasing you. And you feel it's all ephemeral, yeah. ephemeral yes. for us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so this is how he, he brings home the entire... Images of the range of images of the vital world. Amidst life symbols of her occult power, he moved and felt them as close real forms. Ah. Yeah, that, there, there it is. Yeah, yeah. In that life more concrete than the lives of men. Throbbed heartbeats of the hidden reality. Embodied was there what we but think and feel. So all that we feel takes on an image there. And it's something concrete like, you know, rose. Yeah. Love would take a form of a rose. So this is how, and many of these symbols are even used today. Like when we go to people and, you know, gift some of these flowers. They're basically symbols of nature in its creative joy. Self-framed. What here takes outward borrowed shapes. This is uh -huh. what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah. So there it's there as a, you know, almost a perfect reality. Here borrowed shapes. So what happens? Uh, uh, things uh, uh, get smushed. They, they, they don't give that kind of feeling. You know, the, there is a wildness. There are, there are mixtures, but there, there is hardness. You don't see these roses swinging like this so beautifully, for example. <laughs> But there you see it. Probably there are roses without thorns. A million, Who knows? <laughs> a million notices on one stem. Yes, yes. <laughs> so all that you see in that vital world and the project here. And beyond it, in her highest heights, a comrade of silence on her austere heights. Yes. Accepted by her mighty loneliness, he stood with her on meditating peaks. Very powerful lines. Yes. Ashupati has gone right up to the top. Yeah. And now he stands with this power of life, the deity of life, at her very highest. Yes. And it's, she's meditating. And what is she meditating upon? She's meditating actually upon the truth. From whom she is drawing all the stores and creating forms. Alas, still in the realm of ignorance. So that's why... We have in Indian thought two types of Maya, Vidyamayi and Avidyamayi. So Vidyamayi Maya is, is that part which is that, that mother who is still in contact. Both are at the level of the cosmos. 
uh, or the cosmic uh, self. So she is the one who is still in connection with the oneness. But the Avidya Mai Maya is someone who, who is not yet in touch of the oneness but is trying to create oneness because he feels and senses it within. So you know you have these two kinds of form makers in Indian thought. So here she is meditating where life and being are a sacrament offered to the reality beyond. So what is she doing? What is her tapasya? All these forms she is creating and showing. All these forms she is creating and showing. As is to get a sanction, a smile, a look, a glance of the Divine Beloved. And how the Divine Mother could, you know, like people here, they would make things and take it to the Mother. And how the Mother could see and know. Uh, I think um, Vasudha Ben recounts this story. I may be mistaken. No, it was Sahanadi or Vasudha Ben. I'm, I'm, I may forget it. But the story is there, which is true. That uh, she had embroidered something and taken it to the mother and mother liked it very much she said ah this one has been made with in a state of offering so she could make out whether something has been made in a state of offering or it has been made just like I have to do a job and you know it should be perfect good looking and just gone and offer I think she said even every stitch every stitch has been yes that's yes. it and which was very true. And the person said, yes, this one I had made that way. Yes. So look, you know, the same thing. She's offering all this creative impulsion. Now, you know, what a grand yoga is taking place. And where are we? <laughs> so life, all this creative splendor is offering to the... I would like to share a story. Yes, please. <laughs> it was sometime in the uh, mid-60s. I had the inspiration to learn how to hook a rug. And I hooked the rug in mother's symbol, oh. in blue and white, and sent it to mother. And Amrita wrote back and he said, mother was so happy to receive this, she began using it for her feet immediately. My God. Oh. What it. a joy that what was. A joy. <laughs> So this is her, that's how she draws an urge from there. <clears throat> and saw her lose into infinity. Her hooded eagles of significance, messengers of thought to the unknowable. So you know now on the highest peaks, suddenly these eagles are as if emerging out of the unknown, entering into the realm of life. There is a whole creative movement. And again, the whole thing is offered back to the infinite into which she is eventually merging. What a lovely image this is. Identified in soul vision and soul sense, entering into her depths as into a house, all he became that she was or longed to be. He thought with her thoughts and journeyed with her steps. This, is, this was necessary for both Sri and the mother. Yes. Mother speaks of many of her experiences in Algeria. She said they were many of them were in the vital worlds when she had to go through it. Shabindra himself speaks about many of his experiences yes. in the beginning, yes. which were in the vital worlds. They had to yes. go through it. Yes. Then only they could tell others that, you know, be careful, there is a danger, this is what it means, go this way, go that way. So many dreams people narrated, uh, you know, in the vital world. Even she said that, you know, when you get a punch, it can actually have a physical effect. And Amal yeah. Kiran had a black eye. Lived with her breath and scanned all with her eyes. He thought with her thoughts and journeyed with her steps. Lived with her breath and scanned all with her eyes. That so he might learn the secret of her soul. So he is completely now, Ashupati has identified himself. Yes. In fact, he would do it with each plane of consciousness. Yes. Completely with the cosmic vital. And he knows all the secrets. And that's how he will go beyond it. That's how Shubindu knew actually the secret about everything. Because he had completely gone through these steps by steps. And scanned the secrets of the overmind. That also, that will be much later. Much later. He witnessed... Overmastered by his scene, 
He admired her splendid front of pomp and play, and the marvels of her rich and delicate craft, and thrilled to the insistence of her cry. Impassioned he bore the sorceries of her might, felt laid on him her abrupt mysterious will, her hands that need fate in their violent grasp, her touch that moves, her powers that seize and drive. All these he has seen as a witness who is pulled. See, it's so difficult. You know, a yogi of the caliber of Ashupati. Yeah. Even he is pulled by them. And he goes, he sees, identifies. And he sees how powerful this vital world can be. You can any time mistake. Yeah. Kali, mother says that what people have made of her. This is not the real Kali. These are Kalis in the vital world where you see countless, countless and people worship. But he sees something more. Yes. And that is the lesson. <laughs> and this is it. But this too he saw. Her soul that wept within. Her seekings vain that clutch at fleeing truth. Her hopes whose somber gaze mates with despair. The passion that possessed her longing limbs, the trouble and rapture of her yearning breasts, her mind that toils unsatisfied with its fruits, her heart that captures not the one beloved. So many, so many forms it creates to embody the one beloved. Yes. And she lost yes. in the forms and figures countless forms and figures, searches for the one beloved on all these. Yes. Ah, here, ah, there, maybe here. Yeah. But at the end, everything she finds, the joy of discovery, the joy of creation, but misses that one face, yes. the most loved of all. Yes. This is a famous line, no? Yeah. One face that most loved by all. I'm forgetting, it's yeah. a famous poet who wrote this. Always he met a veiled and seeking force, an exiled goddess building mimic heavens. Ah. So this is the uh, irony and the fate or tragedy of this world and the goddess who is building all this, the creative goddess who has been exiled from her own highest truth. So she remembers her home and wants to create she remembers where she comes from. She remembers vaguely a little memory and outline of the face. And she is trying to build it. Yeah. Always he met a veiled and seeking force. An exiled goddess building mimic heavens. A sphinx whose eyes look up to a hidden sun. So we stop at page 191.